industry and infrastructure in 1947 when india became independent many of the western economies were already developed with the help of industrialization but india was standing at a different position india had to start from initial state in the economy india had many challenges for example abject poverty abject mass poverty india had to fight abject mass poverty health care conditions health care conditions health care conditions poverty poverty to ho gaya employment unemployment so india was standing in a totally different position india had many challenges to face after independence whereas colonial colonial rulers english did not put a heavy investment towards this department colonial rulers did not invested at healthcare conditions of india at education so there are a lot of challenges in front of indian economy hence to have a very high growth of development of indian economy the economists at that time of at the time of indian independence they thought industries industrial sector would be the prime moving force prime moving force prime moving force we can also say pmf it's a short form of prime moving force pmf okay industrial sector was chosen as the prime moving force for the indian economy now it was it was thinking of that era of that time that industries could only change the scenario of indian economy industries will increase the growth rate of the indian economy this was the mindset of that of that period of many economists of many economists and in india case in 1930s only it was decided that industrialization would be the prime moving force of the nation the first industrial policy resolution was passed in 1948 it came in 1948 the first industrial policy resolution now you will see the different contents of the first industrial policy resolution now in this industrial policy resolution 1948 in this industrial policy resolution it was decided that india will be a mixed economy in this industrial policy resolution only in 1948 india decided to be a mixed economy not capitalist capitalist one not a socialist socialist one india will be a mixed economy first thing india will be a mixed economy second thing that government divided some uh, important industries under the centralist so there are two types of industries it uh, which industries were divided basically into two parts under the centralist and the stateless the major ones the important ones important industries were under the centralist for example railways railways were under the centralist power arms and ammunition civil aviation so this came under 
center list and under the state list the medium sized industries the medium sized industries came under the state list for example medicine come under the state list textile came under the state list okay now the industries which didn't come under the central list and the state list they were open for the private partnership so those industries neither state nor state nor central list the, those industries which didn't come under the neither state list nor central list they were open for the private private sector investment private sector investment and license was compulsory private sector investment if there is any private sector investor so that investor require a li license requires a license so license was compulsory in 1948 this is ipr 1948 now we will see the next resolution 1956 ipr 1956 now the next one ipr 1956 ipr 1956 in ipr 1956 the then prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru has termed the psus as the temples of modern india in this 1956 ipr jawaharlal nehru termed psus as temples of modern india now we will see different provisions of the ipr 1956 IPR 1956 Industrial Policy Resolution 1956 The first feature of IPR is the industries were divided into three schedules or you can say industries were reserved means reservation of industries started in the IPR 1956 Industrial Policy Resolution 1956 so reservation of industries reservation of industry means categorization of industries okay which industries will come under central list or state list or be kept open for the private sector investment this is this process is called reservation of industries so reservation of industries started and first schedule a in schedule a central public sector units central public sector units that cpsu which later came to known as psu public sector undertakings so central public sector undertakings the industries which came under schedule a were known as central public sector under undertakings cpsu the industries came under the schedule a were known as central public sector undertakings and they were 17 in numbers 17 cpsus were there which later came to known as psus public sector undertakings okay now the second classification or reservation is schedule b now schedule a industries totally came under the central government control totally came under the control of central government okay means total monopoly of central government would be there in schedule a industries now schedule b industries schedule b industries were came under the state government state government and they were 12 industries means 12 industrial sectors were under the state list were under the state government so schedule b for the state government now schedule c 
is for those industries which are neither in the under the state central list or state list but they are kept open for the private sector investment private sector investment psi private sector investment so there there was a categorization of industries into different schedule schedule a schedule b schedule c this was ipr 1956 now in this ipr 1956 jawaharlal nehru stated termed the psu as the temples of the modern india temples of the modern india temples of the modern india temples of modern india okay temples of modern india another important characteristic of ipr 1956 is this ipr 1956 is also known as license permit quota license permit quota permit quota raj of indian economy this is because this is because in ipr 1956 provision of licensing was made compulsory provision of licensing in ipr 1956 was made very much compulsory so the industries under schedule b and c were to have license which is compulsory now this ipr this now this licensing system of ipr 1956 has many shortcomings to resolve these shortcomings government formulated another ipr 19 69 another ipr another industrial policy resolution 1969 1969 was formulated due to the shortcomings of the license permit quota raj of ipr 1956 ipr 1956 has many shortcomings to resolve those shortcomings ipr 1969 was formulated now industrial policy statement 1969 so industrial policy statement 1969 industrial policy statement 1969 this was formulated to eradicate the shortcomings of the licensing policy which was started in 1956 means the shortcoming of the industrial policy resolution 1956 was eradicated by the industrial policy statement 1969 IPS 1969. Basically, industrial policy statement 1969 was a licensing policy. Okay, which was based on the nationalist and the socialistic ideals. Let's say the provisions of the industrial policy statement 1969 was to have a exploitation of resources for development for all this is totally a representation of socialistic ideals well welfare state welfare for all development for all so this thinking this thought this way of economic planning comes from the socialistic ideals so provisions of the industrial policy statement 1969 was exploitation of resources for development of all for development of all priority of resource exploitation for the industries priority of resource exploitation for industries price control price control of the goods produced by the licensed industries now what are licensed industries licensed industries are those industries which come under the schedule b and c 
okay those industries which come under the schedule b and c which are under the state control or either private sector investor investors but those industries which are licensed if you if those industries which are licensed means they will produce their goods at cheaper cost so the public could procure those goods at a cheaper cost at a cheaper rate so price control of the goods produced by the licensed industries this was the socialistic ideal also and goal of the industrial policy statement 1969 so price control of goods produced by licensed industries licensed industries okay checking concentration of economic power let's say there is a market and in that particular market if there is any industry who is playing a monopoly role who have a monopoly that will create a concentration of economic power of that market so to eradicate this concentration of economic power also this was the main uh, this was also a goal of industrial policy statement 1969 now concentration to check concentration of economic power in the market concentration of economic power in the market okay now next channelizing investment into desired direction desired direction means channelizing investment in the healthcare in infrastructure okay so channelizing investment in the desired direction in the desired direction now what happened that industrial policy resolution 1956 were not able to perform these functions were not able to perform this socialistic and nationalistic ideals so industrial policy statement 1969 when it was published the economists so many shortcomings many fraud activities they encountered the major fraud activities they encounter were majorly well established and big industries were able to procure fresh licenses fresh licenses were able to procure fresh licenses which were mainly for the new budding entrepreneurs for the new entrepreneurs so the entrepreneurs were not able to flourish new entrepreneurs were not able to flourish because those fresh licenses were procured by the well established and big industries this was one of the shortcomings second shortcoming was that the government licensed industries government licensed industries they used to produce goods at cheaper rates so that public could procure those goods at cheaper rates but what happened these industries these big industries produce goods 
means sell their goods at a higher rate and procure subsidies from the government too these big industries procure subsidies from the government too subsidies from the government too and after that also they provide they were providing they were not providing the goods at cheaper rate this was a second shortcoming now this well established and big industries were also doing one fraud activities through various trade practices they put pressure over the new and small industries so that those small industries could be overtaken by these big industries so sell outs and take over take overs of small industries by big industries so this product is were happening now government decided to take action against this fraud activities so government formed an act which is known as mrtp act mrtp act which act mrtp act mrtp act mrtp act monopolistic and restricted restrictive trade practice act monopolistic and restrictive trade practices act this act was passed to regulate the activities of the big firms and to check monopoly and concentration of economic power why was this formed to regulate the trading and commercial practices of the big firms and checking monopoly checking monopoly and concentration of economic power now to counter the sell outs and take overs of small industries government adopted a very clever policy clever trick now the firms which have assets of 25 crore or more firms with a set of 25 crore or more will have a obligation to take permission from the government to increase their branch to increase their size and this means what i mean to say the firm big firms with assets 25 crore or more than 25 crore will have to take permission from the government of india to increase their branch to increase their venture now this was a 
very good step taken by the government of india now the big firms will have to give reason appropriate reason to the government of india why they are procure why they are take overing of those take take overing of those small industries hai na so now this uh, this is the mrtp limit 25 crore this was in 1969 this was in 1969 and this limit mrtp limit increased to 80 crore uh, sorry 50 crore in 1980 and it increased to 100 crore in 1985 okay and uh, and one commission were also set up that commission were known as mrtp commission this commission was set up for the redressal of the prohibited and restricted practices this commission was set up for the redressal of prohibited and restricted practices of trade for redressal of prohibited and restricted trade practices okay this mrtp commission was set up in 1969 and those companies which have assets more than the mrtp limits are known as mrtp companies in newspaper we say we see mrtp companies it means those companies have assets more than the mrtp limit set by the government of india 